We can use if statements to control the flow of our code. An if statement is a statement that evaluates to true or false. And if the statement is true, then the computer, computer will run subsequent blocks of code. If the statement is false, then it will not run those subsequent blocks of code. So let us begin to see how we can use if statements in our programs. Now, just to give us a variable to play with, and we've been kind of working with like inputting an age from a user, I'm just going to say my age equals input, please enter your age. Okay, so that, that line has nothing to do with an if statement or a Boolean expression or anything like that. All that's doing is uh, just getting us a variable called my age. Uh, with which to work. Okay, now we you can imagine we might want to do something um, based on that person's age. Like if this if this was like a voting website, uh, we might want to compare that age to 18. And if the age is greater than or equal to 18, then maybe there's some form that the person can fill out. And if that age is less than 18, then um, you know we say we get, we load a new uh, web page that says. Uh, you know, come back in so many years or whatever. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, say if, and then um, we want to compare my age to 18 in this example. So we, we start with the word if, and you see it lights up in blue. And so that's a key word. We don't want to call any variables or functions if. If means something very particular in Python. If and we're going to compare it to 18, which is a number. And remember when you input something with the input function, it stores it as a string. So even though you input something like, you know, 21 or whatever, um, 21 is going to be in a string. So we want to convert that to an int or a float. So we can say, for example, if int my age, right, that converts it to a float, is greater than or equal to uh, 18 in this case. And then we're going to put a colon. And this is just the syntax of a Python if statement. It starts with the word if, then a, a statement that evaluates to a Boolean variable, like true or false. A Boolean um, uh, uh, value, I guess, is a better word. A Boolean value. So this thing will evaluate to either true or false. And then we need a colon after the if statement. That's just, that's just the rule of Python. And then when we hit enter, if we do that correctly, Python, or you know, in this case I'm using Spider, Spider will automatically indent the next line. You see where the cursor is right now? You, you have to indent inside an if statement. And uh, that's, again, that's just a rule of Python. So an if statement will have the word if, then a conditional statement, then you know, a, sta a statement that uh, evaluates true or false, then a colon, then an indentation. On the next line. Now, what are we going to do? Um, you know, in this simple example, let's just print something. Print, um, we are inside the if statement. Okay, just something simple like that. And then, that's it. That that's that's uh, the end of my program. So I just want to demonstrate this to you. Now. Um, and uh, we're, we're out of the if statement, so on line 17, if there was more code and you wanted to be out of the if statement, you would put your um, more code here, out of the if statement, out of the if statement, right, because the indentation is out of the if statement. But if you wanted your code to be, if you wanted more code inside the if statement, you would start here in the indentation. This is more code in the if statement. You see, so the indentation is playing a critical role here. If you indent, you're in the if statement. If you're not indenting, then that signals to Python that, okay, the if statement is over. All right, now I'm just going to save this thing uh, as untitled zero, I guess. That's a bad name, but. Um, We'll just I'll I'll resave it as if statement test dot py. 
on my desktop. Okay, and I'm going to change my desktop or change change my current working directory to the desktop. All right, so now I'm in the desktop. I've got my folder there. I'm going to run this thing. I'll clear the command window first, and I'll reset the variables. Okay. So I'm going to run this thing. Run. And you see, please enter your age. All right, so I'm going to test this thing out. So um, I'm going to enter 21. And then you see it prints, we are inside the if statement. So in other words, line 16 on my program was executed because the number that I input, 21, is, is greater than or equal to 18. Now we want to test this thing out thoroughly, so I'm going to run it again, and I'm going to try something like 16. I hit enter, and, you, and that's the end of the program, and you see that uh, you know that, that statement, we are inside the if statement, was never printed because line 16 was never executed because the if statement evaluated to false. Now, one critical value here for my age would be 18, right? This is a number that could possibly break your code. So let's try it again. And if our logic is correct, you know, 18 you can vote. That's our example here. So 18, I should be inside the if statement. And so if I enter 18, you see we are inside the if statement. Nice. So that works. That little, that little piece of code works. You can see, again, if it evaluates to true, then we then we execute all of the lines that are indented. If we execute, to, uh, if, if we uh, evaluate to false, then we skip those lines. Now, um, just to kind of uh, uh, extend this idea, there is the else statement. And, and it goes along with the if. So what we can do is we can say something like, okay, if, um, we're of voting age, then we say we are inside the if statement. And we might actually say something like this. We might say um, you can vote. Okay, so we'll add that just to just to um, bring drive home this point that all of the lines are executed so long as there's an indentation. Now, we might want to say something to the user um, if the user is not of age to vote. And so what we would do here is we would say else colon. And you see that else lights up in blue or you know a different color. So that's a key word in Python as well. So we have else colon. And the else, as far as indentation goes, the else has to be lined up with its corresponding if. That's the rule of Python. If you hit enter, um, it should indent. Mine, mine did not indent for some reason. but but I had to manually indent. So now uh, it has to be indented, and I'm going to say, I'm going to calculate how about the the um, the number of years the person has to wait to vote. So what I'm going to say is um, uh, wait equals, and I'm going to take 18 minus, and remember my age is a string, so I'm going to convert it to an integer. All right, so if they entered 17, then wait would be 1. And then I'm going to say, come back in, and then I'm going to convert wait, which is a numerical value, to a string, so I can append it or uh, concatenate it. Come back in blank. years like that all right so now that message is going to be displayed let's give it a shot here so I'm gonna save it control s run it okay please enter your age now I'm gonna try again 21 or 22 maybe and it says we are inside the if statement you can vote so lines 16 and 17 were executed because the if statement evaluated to true 22 is greater than or equal to 18 now let's try 16. So I'll run this thing. All right, 16. Nope, it says please, uh, or it says come back in two years, right? Two years we can vote. Let's try it again. Let's try 10. Please come back in eight years. Perfect. 
So that that works. That, that works nicely. All right. And uh, just we're going to extend this even more now. Let's say we wanted to print something for um, maybe uh, users who are close to age of 18, like 16, 17. Maybe we want to say like you can't vote, but you should you should um, research the candidates or something like that. I don't know. And then um, for everybody else, we'll say come back in blank years. So what we could do is we could use the else if statement. Okay, so what we're going to do here, or excuse me, L if, I guess. L if. That's short for else if, but it's L if. And you'll see that L if lights up in blue. So that's a key word. So I'm going to write L if colon, and then, or not L if colon, sorry, L if. Now I give uh, a statement that evaluates to true or false. So um, let's say L if. Uh, int my age is greater than or equal to 16 then I'm and then I'm gonna put a colon and I'm gonna print you are you are too young to vote but you should research the candidates anyway right yeah because this person is getting old enough to where you know maybe maybe these things are uh, you know important to the person maybe 15 14 whatever we'll change it to 15 uh, but you should research the candidates okay so and then we're gonna still keep our else and and then we'll say come back in blank years so what's going to happen here is that um, we're going to get an age and we're going to convert it to an int and we're going to compare that against 18 at first and if it's greater than or e equal to 18 we're going to print we are inside the if statement you can vote and then it's going to skip everything else if that's false if line 15 evaluates to false then it's going to come down to line 19 because we said else else if then we're going to compare it to 15 and if it's greater than or equal to 15, we're going to say this. You are too young to vote, but you should research the candidates. And then if that's false, then we would go to the else and we would say come back in blank years. So let us save that. Control S. I'm going to clear the command window of the console. And we're going to run it. All right. And so you'll see if I put it in like 21, nothing's changed. We are inside the if statement. You can vote. If I run it again... And if I input, let's say, 15, you are too young to vote, but you should research the candidates. See that? So now we line 19 evaluated to true, so we, we printed 21 and 22. If I run it again, and I put, like, 13, it says come back in five years. So um, it evaluated line 15 to false. It evaluated line 19 to false. But then it went into line 22 and, that, and the subsequent block of code there. All right, and of course, we can do all sorts of other things using these comparison operators, but the idea is that we need a statement, or we need statements that can evaluate to you know a Boolean value, true or false. And we can go crazy with these else if, or these L if statements. We don't have to just stop at one. We can put a whole bunch in there, right? L if um, int my, uh, excuse me, L if int my age, is uh, is greater than or equal to maybe um, 12 maybe we do something else um, you know print print something here uh, um, you know go you know uh, we could say go study at junior high or something <laughs> something like that and uh, and you know so we could we could we don't have to have just one this should be my age we can have a bunch of these L if statements if we want, as many as we need um, for the problem. Now, usually I get a question that's, that says, um, do you need L if? Can't you just have a bunch of if statements? And I want to demonstrate that to you here. Um, so let's, I'm just going to copy this block, and I'm going to paste it down here. And then I'm going to comment this out. 
Or no, we'll, we'll just leave it. Now there's another way of doing the exact same thing, and uh, this is the question that I'll get. So what we could do instead is we could just, just have a bunch of if statements. All right, if um, you know the age is greater than or equal to 18, then we do this thing. Or we could say if um, we're less than 18, right, and we're greater than or equal to 15, right? This would be equivalent to this L if. We, we, because we're not using else, we still have to compare it to 18 then, and so it has to fall between 15 and 18, right? And then we could do this, we could say um, L if, and we could say uh, we're less than 15, and int my age is greater than or equal to 12, right? And then we could say um, something like this, if we're less than 12, then we would do this, right? So this is a question I usually get, do we have to use L if, or can we just use a bunch of if statements? So the, the answer is that there, there are a lot of ways to write a program that does the same thing, right? This is the beautiful thing about programming. If I ask you to paint a sunset, you know, everybody paints a sunset, but um, they all paint it differently, right? So uh, this, these two blocks do the same thing, but uh, they do it differently. The first block is actually more efficient, but you don't have to worry about that in our course. We just try to get it to work. The first block is more efficient because um, if line 15 is true, then that's the only line that's evaluated. Lines 19, 22, and 24 are not. 15 is true, bam, done. But here, if 15, uh, if 31 is true, it'll you know it'll execute the, this block. But it'll also then look at line 34 and evaluate that to false. It'll look at line 37 and evaluate that to false. 39 and evaluate that to false. So uh, that takes more computational effort and computational time, and um, you know it's it's not a big deal in this little program, but um, better programming practice would use the L if up here. All right, so that's the end of this little uh, short demo.